Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. In today's episode, we're gonna take a close look at the new Maxpec Jump Skimmer. Alright, so a little while ago I did an unboxing of the new Maxpec Jump range and one of the items in that range is their new dual inlet skimmer. Now this is not the first skimmer Maxpec they've done with dual intakes, they've already got one out there, but this is their Jump range which is aimed at being just a little bit more budget friendly. So I figure let's jump on into my fish room and uh, we'll get these units set up and give it a good test. All right, welcome to my fish room, and this is my large frag tank. This has been a test bed for a number of skimmers over the last couple of years, namely the eShops S200 and recently the Delua or Great White, uh, Great White's DC7 Plus have gone in this tank. And the reason why this tank is such a good test bed for skimmers is that it has no sump. I just literally set the uh, skimmer on the frag rack up here, and it is the final tank in the chain of my automatic water change system. So I have a automatic water change system that draws water from fresh, clean natural salt water or artificial salt water out in my back shed. It goes into my main display tank. It then comes out of my main display tank into my soft coral tank, comes out of my soft coral tank into my clown harem tank, and then finally it comes out of my clown harem tank into this tank, and of course then out of this tank into the drain. But what that means is this tank is the last in the line. So it has the dirtiest of the dirty water. Now, I haven't bothered trying to clean the glass or clean the racks or anything like that. I want the, do the water in here to be as per it normally is because I want to see what the uh, max spec jump skimmer can pull out. So I've done the typical Aussie bloke thing. I haven't read the instructions at all. I've mounted my um, controller up here, which I've just done for the purposes of this video. Normally, you'd probably put that inside your cabinet, but um, I've got it up here. So I've got quick, easy access to it. I've removed the uh, great white skimmer and I'm gonna put the max spec jump in here. We're gonna fire it up and just see if we can work it out without having to go through the huge instructions. So um, wish me luck. Let's get this boy in the water. All right, I think we're clear. Now, I should point out this tank does not run a sump at all. Um, it literally is all just in the display tank here. I've got a couple of max spec gyres uh, just creating the flow and surface disruption. The only filtration this tank has is the skimmer. So it does tend to pull a lot of uh, detritus and floaties out because there's no mechanical filtration. There's no filter socks or um, anything like that. So it does tend to pull a fair bit of gunk in, which does give a pretty dramatic result for a um, skimmer. So you've got to bear that in mind when we are testing skimmers out in here. But um, I feel like we should uh, power him up. Now this skimmer has two connections from the skimmer. We have uh, the skimmer overflow, which is this switch up here. Once the skimmer gets, the cup gets full, it should turn the skimmer off. Now he only fits in one plug, so that makes it easy. You've got the three pin uh, motor connector, which is gonna go to the three pin uh, plug on the controller, which does have two arrows lining it up and a little lock nut to keep it in there. And then last but not least, you've got power, which I've routed up here, to the controller. So I'm gonna fire this up for the first time. Let's see how she goes. All right, it says, we've got a countdown. We're going nine, eight, seven, six, five. This is very dramatic. <laughs> Four, three, two, one. Off she goes. Now shows 100, which I'm gonna assume is 100% power. Now, the first thing I notice is the skim is very, very quiet. Now, I would expect all new skimmers to be very quiet, but um, this is particularly noisy. In fact, the only thing I can hear from, sorry, particularly quiet, the only thing I can actually hear is the actual bubbles breaking up. That's how quiet it is. Now, it's gonna be quite difficult to get a sound um, through the camera in this room because there's so much equipment running in here and it can be quite noisy and that camera does tend to be very sensitive in picking these things up, but um, it's beautifully quiet. You can't even hear the um, air intakes. Now, 
We've got a little bit lucky here. Like I said, I haven't read the instructions, but I am going to assume that we can go between 18 centimeters and 22 centimeters of depth by the uh, measurements on the side of the skimmer body. We're sitting quite low at 19 centimeters in here. So I may have to raise the water level up a little bit in the skimmer body itself, rather than trying to lower the skimmer in the tank. But just while it's bedding in, I'm going to let it run fairly low there because um, it just, you just never know. When it beds in, it might start producing quite a lot more. So I don't want to have it sitting up here only for it to then bubble over. So I'll just let it run there for a little while. One thing I was desperate to test is what the activity is when the float switch gets activated. Okay, so push the float switch up. It's turned the skimmer body off. Now I let the float go. And it looks like we remain off. So the controller here is flashing saying that the cup was full. And I'm assuming if I press the button, oh no, it's going to power itself back on. Okay. So you don't have to turn it back on. It will have a bit of a time delay though. So if the skimmer cup gets full, it will wait a little while before turning itself back on, which is always good. And it's turned back on to 100%. Super, super quiet. We do have the, uh, the little dial adjustment here, which allows us to raise and lower the um, volume in the, um, in the skimmer body. And that's a pretty nice little adjustment. And then we've got the motor dial, which if I press the button, okay, yeah, if I press the button that unlocks the percentage and then I can turn that back. It looks like we can go in steps of 10. So I can say go back to 60% power, press the button that'll lock that in. What's good about that is if someone comes along and bumps um, this dial accidentally, because it is quite easy to touch, it's not going to adjust the power in your skimmer. All right, now one thing that does get my goat a little bit on these skimmers is the adjustment dial. And now, this is not the first skimmer lately that um, if you turn it towards the plus, it actually makes the, uh, the gate valve open more, which lowers the volume in the skimmer. To me, that's backwards, but this is a few skimmers in a row now that seem to operate that way. So I'm going to assume that it's just me. It's not, <laughs> it's not a mistake. I would have thought if you turned the plus to the plus side more, that would raise the volume in the skimmer, but it does in fact lower the volume in the skimmer, which is... Um, Probably not the way I would have it set if it was up to me. One other thing I've been able to notice whilst this skimmer has been running for a few minutes is the unique design of the uh, water exit through that gate. That the water actually has to go under the pump holding block and then exit out through that uh, little opening there where you've got this valve that opens and closes. Makes it really, really difficult for bubbles to get through there because they have to go underneath the motor to come out, which in a situation like this where you've got uh, the skim is not operating in a sump with baffles before and after it, it means that it's producing tiny, if any, micro bubbles out of the body at all, which is awesome because normally skimmers I run in this tank exit quite a lot of micro bubbles and then these dryers just pump them all over the tank. So something like this where it's not releasing all these micro bubbles is amazing. All right, that's probably about where I want to dial in. I've got the bubbles sitting right at the base of the cup um, we're getting no micro bubbles coming out of the skimmer. I'm going to let that run for a couple of hours just while it beds in and then we'll see what it's collected out of this tank. Okay, so we've been running for five minutes so far and you can see all the detritus plus the uh, foam itself starting to get uh, a little bit dark in there and it's got a nice head going on. So, uh, so far so good, but it's been five minutes. <laughs> Let's let it go for a little while. 10 minutes in, we're starting to see some uh, some gunk make its way into the skimmer cup. And of course, here it is after a couple of days, which has got some pretty decent uh, foamy gunk going on there. Let's see how much we get when we tip it out. All right, here we are after a couple of days. Now I have had the skim out to run fairly wet, which I do like to do in that frag tank, because like I said, there is actually no mechanical filtration, but you can see the skim out still has some good color to it. You can see by the amount of uh, froth still in the cup that it was absolutely still churning away. And uh, I found whilst running it in this fairly wet configuration that I would have to empty this cup every two to three days, which is fairly impressive. Now, in fairness, I did add the fish from my uh, main display tank after shutting it down, which did drastically increase the uh, bio load, but uh, the skimmer handled it really, really well. So um, I'm pleased to say that it uh, has performed its job with an A plus grading. 
All right, guys, there you have it. That's the Maxspec Jump Skimmer Review. Now, this item is available in Australia now. It sells for about 780 Australian dollars, depending on where you pick it up from. And I guess I should go over some of the things I like about it and some of the things I don't like so much about it. So I guess we'll start off with the cons first. Now, the first thing I don't like a lot on this skimmer, and I am scratching a little bit to find th things I don't like about it, but the only thing, I, well, the, one of the things I don't like about it is the water level adjustment. Now, I know I've always been picky on these things about the plus and minus being around the wrong way. That's kind of neither here nor there. Once you get your skimmer set, it's all good and well, but it does just kind of screw with my head when I'm trying to work out the right water level for the skimmer. And I think, mm, I need to get the water level up a bit higher. I turn it to the plus and the water level goes down. It's weird. Anyway, that could be just me. I'll get on from that. Now, the next thing I don't like a lot about this skimmer, and it's in the same sort of area, is that water level adjustment. Now, whilst it looks really nice and sleek, I do, I, I worry a little bit about it. It feels fairly weak. Um, I guess it's not something that should be copying a lot of abuse, and as long as you're careful with it, you should be right. But um, it's not quite as industrial as some of those big bulky external screws, or even just the basic old a half pipe that you turn, which has got like that uh, wedge cut down the bottom. But um, like I said, I'm scratching a little bit to find some cons. All right, onto the positives or the pros for this skimmer, and I've got quite a long list that I'm really, really pleased with. First of all is the quality of the acrylic. This thing looks and feels beautiful. It feels very good quality, looks really high class. For the amount of money you spend on this skimmer, it really looks like the acrylic is from something one or two levels above that. It's just got a lovely, lovely finish. It feels really nice in the hand and it's quite heavy. All right, next up, I love the dual intake. It just seems like such a good idea. I know that they, well, I'm assuming they've developed this from their Gaia technology, which has obviously got the um, armature and the motor in the middle with the two shafts coming out each side for your um, Gaias. They've developed that even further to give you a, uh, a, an impeller style pump with two impellers on it. It just seems to make a lot of sense and it uh, does give you a little bit better um, placement wise. I guess when you're putting this in the sump, normally you have to kind of position your skimmer in a certain position so that it gets the incoming water. It's not necessarily this. You've got two intakes on opposite sides and it just seems to make really good use of it. And if you get one, get a little bit clogged up, you get a snail in there or you get a bit of um, hair algae or something go into one of those um, impeller wheels. The other side's still gonna be churning away for you. So it feels like it's a nice bit of redundancy. All right, now the next thing that I like about the skimmer, and I really, I don't know why, but I didn't notice it until it was running, is the translucent impeller housings. Now, it's just really cool. I don't know how functional it really is, but you can see the air getting drawn into the motor and it getting churned up and then spitting out. Being able to see that while the pump is in operation and while the skimmer is there in place is really cool. And I think it's really functional. I don't know, but it's gotta be better to be able to see it than not see it. You're gonna be able to see if you've got something blocking the air intake or something there. So you're gonna have no air bubbles mixing. So it seems like a really cool idea. All right, I'm down to my second last thing that I really love about this skimmer, and that is the controller. It's a really simple, non-over-the-top controller. It gives you 10 steps in 10% increments. Well, I guess probably 11 if you include 0%, but we're not really gonna run it at 0%. It just seems like a really, really simple to use, easy to read, well thought out controller. We don't need different modes for day and night or any of that jazz. Just let me uh, pick a percentage, dial it in and go from there. The fact that you have to hold the button down for a second before you turn the wheel to make an adjustment is a really good idea because um, <laughs> it's very easy to bump that wheel. And if it was just as easy as turning that wheel to turn your skimmer up and down, it could be a little bit of a hazard. All right, now the last thing I really love about the skimmer, and it is absolutely my favorite, and it blows my mind that other skimmers don't do this. I don't know why, there could be a good reason, but it's got an automatic shutoff valve in the skimmer cup. That is an absolute lifesaver for people that don't want their skimmer overflowing into their tank, which is probably everyone. If this thing fills up, it's gonna turn the skimmer off. It's just gonna wait there for you to come and empty that skimmer cup rather than just overflowing and dumping that all into the tank. Because let's face it, these things will occasionally react to something in the air, something you put in the water, and they will foam up and foam over. Now, whilst it's not exactly a tank grenade if that happens, it's still best avoided. And something like a simple float switch in your skimmer cup can save you all that hassle. So huge shout out to Maxpec for including that on this skimmer because um, it just seems to be like the obvious choice in 2020. All right, guys, that's the end of the review on the Maxpec Jump Skimmer. Let me know what you thought about it. Pop the comments in the section down below. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And as always, if you're yet to, please consider subscribing by hitting that subscribe button down in that corner down there. It goes a long way to helping me out on this YouTube venture, and I'd really appreciate it. Till next time, guys, stay safe, keep roofing. Bye.